in the Holy Gospel according to Taylor. Glory to you, O Lord. Be attentive. The Lord said, He who hears you hears me, and he who rejects you rejects me, and he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The seven returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In the same hour, Jesus rejoiced in the spirit and said, I thank thee, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, and thou hast hidden these things from the wise and the prudent revealed them to babes. Yea, with Father, for such was the gracious will. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High, and the power of the Most High, Good morning. Good morning, Father. Only one person said good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning Father. <laughs> All right, just a couple minutes. I just wanted to. Uh, St. Paul in the book of Colossians is writing to the people that are serving with him. And one of the instructions he gives to those men that are serving and to the people that are serving is to, and it's actually a couple verses before today's reading, is to be earnest in prayer, right? And that earnesty in prayer means to be continuous in prayer. Paul writes about that numerous times, right? Where we're supposed to have a prayer life that is our life, not just where, when we're at church, not just in the morning or not just in the evening, but we're supposed to be continually in prayer. Now, I heard an interesting thing where it said, where I, I heard another uh, man make a comment, he said that he believes, and I've been resonating with this for a while now as I'm, as I'm thinking about this, that prayer actually begins with God, right? It actually begins with God and God's heart and God's will, right? If you think about this, right, and I know everybody's question has a question mark right now, but think about Jesus' statement in the gospel today, right? I did not, you did not select me, I selected you, right? Jesus selected these men because he knew their hearts. He knew who they were going to become. He knew who they were, right? And I had heard different times where, like, for instance, my mom had talked to me where she had told me at different points where people had said, I prayed for my spouse for 30 years to find God. 30 years I was fervently praying to God for them to accept Christ, for them to walk in the Lord, for them to, and it took 30 years of prayer. Why did it take 30 years? Did not God hear that prayer the first day that he, the person prayed that prayer? And I know even for me, as I was going through my rebellious stage in my youth, my mom earnestly prayed for me right? Pray for me to become the man that I needed to be. But why did it take so long? Why did I have to go through all those things, right? Because those prayers, I believe, and the way I'm beginning to understand is as we're praying, as we are beginning to pray, for instance, the prayers that I say for each man here at the church is for you to have wisdom, right? That's part of my prayer for all the men at the church. I want wisdom for the women as well, too. But especially the men that are married or the men that are serving people to have that wisdom that they need because life experience and things that happen to us in our lives bring us to different portions of our life that's why when i heard that statement that the prayer actually belongs and begins with god that as we're praying as we are starting to get closer and closer to god's will we begin to understand what god desires of us and our prayers begin to change 
our prayers begin to become more fervent because we're starting to pray in God's will, right? I always ask myself, Jesus says, and I realize he was talking to the disciples, but he said to go out and make disciples of all men. He said to go out to go and preach the gospel to the nations. And as we read in today's gospel reading, right, the 70 disciples that, that were chosen went out among the people, and when they came back, they were rejoicing, right? And they were rejoicing in the fact that even the demons were subject to them, right? They were healing people. They were taking care of people's ailments. They were casting out demons, right? We hardly see those things today. We hardly see those kind of miracles. Yes, in the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church, we do see uh, exorcists and everything where people do cast out demons, right? But it takes a special type of person. But Jesus says, don't rejoice in that, right? Even their hearts, and I wonder if, it was their pride that was coming to them. Yes, they were rejoicing in the fact that they were able to heal. They were rejoicing in the fact that they were able to cast out demons. But it had to be a little bit of that pride inside for Jesus to make the statement, he said, right? Remember that I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, right? Remember this. And don't rejoice that the demons are subject to you. Rejoice at the fact that your names are written in the book of heaven. Right? He's telling them this for a reason. right? And for that reason, I always wonder, is that the reason why I'm not able to go out to a hospital room and heal? Is my pride to that point where I'm still not humble enough to accept the fact that it's not me doing the healing? That it's God doing the healing through me? That if there's a, somebody that's possessed, that if I need to take care of that as a priest, that it's not me that's able to have the power, but through the name of Jesus Christ that has that power? Because oftentimes, one of the things that I battle with most as a pastor of St. Nicodios, as a priest period, is one of the wars I have with is pride. I'm constantly fighting with pride. I'm constantly fighting with the pride that I, I'm the one succeeding. I'm the one making the church grow. And oftentimes, I've got to remind myself it's not me. I'm just trying. I need to stay out of God's way. That He's got me and He selected me even before that I selected Him. Even before I chose to follow in His footsteps. Even though, even before I chose to go to seminary, that He knew me. And that as I started submitting my will to Him, even though my will was still hard, even though my will was still something that needed to be questioned that as I started getting closer to him and I began to submit myself and crucify my mind and to begin to crucify all the things that don't belong in my life, that God had selected me. And that's what that whole idea of the synergistic essence and energy that St. Gregory Palamas talked about, right? We need to work with the Holy Spirit in order for us to glorify God. And in order for us to glorify God, we need to work with the Holy Spirit. It's a synergy. It's something that comes together. So therefore, that's why, and I ask that you all actually think about that as well. Does prayer begin with God? And if it does, then are we to be the ones to be able to be a part of God's plan when we start to walk in his path, we start to walk in his, in, in his will, and we begin to do all the things that we are called to do. So let us glorify and praise the name of the Lord today. I just want to leave you with that small sermon this morning. Amen. Amen. Let us all say with our whole soul and our whole mind, let us say, Lord have mercy. O Lord Almighty, God of our fathers, we pray that you hear us. And I pray.